The bug out bag idea concept is very fun for men because we, we get to, it's like, you know, we never really grow up. We're always 13. And one thing that I, the only really positive thing that I took out of school was uh, show and tell. <laughs> so so we, like, we like show and tell, so it appeals to us. And it's fun, we learn together. That was really what drew me to YouTube and a lot of you as well. The best thing about YouTube, now, if you're a young person, you've always known YouTube, it was always here for you, you know, it wasn't always here. You know, 13 years ago, 14 years ago is really when it started. I think 13 years ago, I started uploading videos and it was pretty new then. And what was so cool was it was the very first time, it was the very first place that you could put up video content that would be hosted for free. That was not an option. You could not upload content anywhere. It would have been cost prohibitive. It would, no one could have afforded it, not, especially not a professional homeowner grade. When YouTube came on the line, it was very revolutionary because it was a place where you could upload your stuff for free and, 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 and share it with people. It was quite something. The first YouTube videos I started watching were, were gear reviews. Uh, Nothing Fancy was, the, was a big influence on me. He was, he was really uh, the grandfather of that, was really revolutionary in that, doing knife reviews and, and backpacks and stuff. And me being someone that really liked gear and was into outdoor stuff a lot, the only way you had access to find out if anything was good or not was at the, at the manufacturer level. Even the websites, even a lot of companies didn't, didn't have really good websites at that time. And if you did have a website, let's say you wanted to go investigate Osprey backpacks, right? Well, you go there and they're going to paint it in the best light. You know, you can see the picture and yeah, this is the best thing ever and all this tech and all these gadgets, but is it really? You know, they're not going to tell you if it's bad. Well, YouTube was awesome because it would give you the ability to see a dude that bought it. He'd bought it with his own money and he was going to give you the real truth. You know, he didn't have an axe to grind. He wasn't beholden to the manufacturer. It was revolutionary and it was really awesome because uh, you could find out if something was good or was, if something was bad. So the bug out bags, that was uh, the natural progression of those types of videos. Um, and I did a whole bunch of them. Nothing Fancy did them and they're great. Uh, I enjoyed doing them. I still have bug out bags. But I have a very different view on that, and that's primarily because of where I live. So my bug out bag is my property. It, I would be insane. What, what am I going to do? I'm going to leave all of the resources that I have here, all of my caches, all of my food, my water supplies, my backup power. I'm going to leave all of that in a backpack and go up and, and try to tough it out in the mountains. For how many days can I stay up there? So that is not a concept for, for me. Now, if you're living in the city and you don't have any place to go and you're just crammed in there like rats, you know, that's a very different thing. My advice when it comes to bug out bags would make your property, make your home your bug out location. That's going to be the best advice for you to hunker down and to stay there. You're going to have water. You're going to have a, a place where you can defend. To be out on, on your own living out of a backpack, that is not a, not a good option. Now, with that being said, what I have switched gears on is rather than having a bug out bag, we have what we call a get home bag. So if Mrs. W is going to go into the city for some reason, or she, her and Jack are going to go to a national debate, we have bags. And what, the, what, what my goal is, what the leader's intent with these bags are, is everything that they would need to get home if they had to get home on foot. That's what, you, what they want to do. And that's their only goal is to get home. Let's say that there was an EMP and the cars are not working. Let's say that there was a major earthquake. And when we live it, we live in a land of rivers and bridges and they would have to cross multiple bridges just to get home. So we've had to come up with provisions. How are we going to deal with that situation if and when it happens? So that's the way I look at it. I think your bug out bag, realistically for most people should be, your mindset should be if I'm at work, or if I'm 200 miles away, whatever it is, that you're going to build that bag in a way that's going to give you the things that you need to get home. And it needs to be specific to, uh, to the time of, time of year as well. How you get home in Minnesota when it's 10 below is going to be very different than Southern man or, t or South, Sex South Texas man, how he's going to get home. You know, he's not going to need big parkas. He's not going to need things to keep his family warm. He's not going to have to have concerns with how am I going to keep water from freezing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the bug out bag is fun and sexy as that may sound, I think is kind of an outdated concept for most people. I would look at having a, a get home bag.
Um, but we can do stuff like that. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. How long does it take you to walk? How many miles can you walk a day? You, know, you need to just kind of start with that. How many days am I going to be on foot? What type of problems am I going to encounter? Do I know the way? Am I going to stick to the roads? You know, how, am I, how am I going to deal with filtering water? How am I going to deal with personal defense? How am I going to deal with communications? How am I going to deal with rainy Pacific Northwest weather, et cetera, et cetera? Do you have some extra cash if the credit card machines won't work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? You know, that one thing alone, just having a couple hundred dollars in small bills and cash or things that you could barter is very important. Most people live off credit cards or Apple Pay. And the gas stations, we've all seen it. Power goes out here all the time. And when the power goes out, the little cardboard sign goes up on the door, only accepting cash. Do you have cash? So that's the type of things that you need to consider. In your mind, work out the scenario. Work out the situation. I am 100 miles from home. Do I have suitable shoes? You know, a lot of shoes that, that our wives and girlfriends wear are not suitable for walking. You know, they, they, they're, they're the worst at it because they just, they, they just, they're the hardest ones. It's the hardest to get them to accept that the world is cruel and difficult and will not cater to them because they've never experienced it before. They've been raised in privilege. They are the females. There's, there's always millions of guys out there. There always has been in the past that are willing to jump in there and step up and change a tire or fi help the, the lady, the damsel in distress. Those days are over, gentlemen.